correspondingly good thoughts. Mm -hmm. And some men, through inexperience, call these appearances true, whereas I call them better than the others, but in no ways wiser, no wise truer. That's so clever. Hmm? Isn't that clever? <laughs> yes. And the wise, my dear Socrates, I do not by any means call tadpoles when they have to do with the human body. I call them physicians. And when they have to do with plants, husbandmen. For I assert that these latter, when plants are sickly, instill into them good and healthy sensations, and true ones, instead of bad sensations. And that the wise and good orators make the good, instead of the evil, seem to be right to their states. For I claim that whatever seem right and honorable to a state is really right and honorable to it, so long as it believes it to be so, that the wise man causes the good, instead of that which is evil to them in each instance, to be and seem right and honorable. And on the same principle, the teacher who is able to train his pupils in this manner is not only wise, but is also entitled to receive high pay from them when their education is finished. And in this sense, it is true that some men are wiser than others, and that no one thinks falsely, and that you, whether you will or not, must endure to be a measure. Upon these positions, my doctrine stands firm, and if you can dispute it in principle, okay. Do I finish the sentence? Dispute it by bringing an opposing yeah. doctrine against so. it. Oh. Good. That's clever. Right. Okay, let's go back. Statement in 166 C. In fact, mm -hmm. if we are to be on our guard against such verbal entanglement, would we admit that a person is one at all and not many who become infinite in number if the process of becoming different continues? To show a more generous spirit by attacking what I actually say, and prove, if you can, that we have not, each one of us, his peculiar perceptions, or that, granting them to be peculiar, it would not follow that what appears to each becomes, or is, if we may use the word is, for him alone to whom it appears. That's the restatement, all right? Mm -hmm. Two, going down to the next section, D. For I do indeed assert that the truth is as I have written. Each one of us is a measure of what is and what is not. But there is all the difference in the world between one man and another, just in the very fact that what is and appears to one is different from what is and appears to the other. By a wise man, I mean precisely a man who can change any one of us when what is, a, what is bad appears and is to him, and make what is good appear and to be to him. How does yours read on that? Mm -hmm. By a wise man, I mean precisely. Mm -hmm. Wait, right in the middle. I do not. Mm -hmm. And the wise, my dear Socrates, and I do not by any means, I do not by any means call tadpoles. Yeah, no, no. Okay, look. Mm -hmm. Remember the stomachache? Oh, there it goes. Right, it's right underneath the last one. Right. Here it is. It really bothers me. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, what is the position going to do? It's going to make. Uh, and that, let me read the sentence. On the contrary, I say that. On the contrary, I say that no. if bad. <coughs> I say that if bad things appear. All right, look here. He judges them bad. That's the way they appear to him. Yes. All right, go ahead. What's he going to do? 
and or to any one of us, precisely that man is wise who causes a change. Right, okay, our position can cause a change mm -hmm. in this. Right, so he no longer feels that. That's right. And makes good things appear. Right, and makes good things appear. Right. So he's that doesn't on. make him wiser. He's focusing on the consequences of the, of the changing. Yeah. All you're doing is changing. Yeah, right. You're changing what appears to be bad for something that appears to him to be good. Yes. Okay. It's not. A, it's not true. You're exchanging. You're exchanging. Just as politicians and husbandmen and educators do the same thing. Well, in the lobby sense, uh, appears oh, and makes good things appear and be. No, yeah. yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Cornford be that now? I hope not. Politicians are educators. Uh, <coughs> That's his big forte. By a wise man, I mean precisely a man who can change any one of us when what is bad appears and is to him and makes what is good appear and be to him. Mm -hmm. Be to him. Mm -hmm. And the same thing is going to be true for any of these people, isn't it? That's their special art. My favorite sentence is the next one. <laughs> right. Remember how it was put earlier in the conversation. To the sick man, his food appears sour, and is so. And to the healthy man, it is and appears the opposite. Now, there's no call to represent either of the two as wiser. That cannot be. Nor is the sick man to be pronounced unwise because he thinks as he does. Or the healthy man wise because he thinks differently. Here's the big thing. He's not going to talk about wise. He's not going to talk about wisdom. What's he going to talk about? Better and worse. There's a new emphasis. Better and worse. Yeah. He's going to focus on change. Yeah. Yeah, right. The man who can bring about a change. Oh. How he does it that's the key. He's saying, hey, that's the emphasis you want to place on human affairs. Not this wisdom stuff. Mm -hmm. Being wise or being true. Yeah. Well, that's not the point. The man who has this vast experience should be able to substitute and help the another person bring to their own experience different states. Not truer, but very true. Just better. It don't appear that way to him. Not if it appears that way to him, it be to him. You know what I mean? What's it called in education? Okay, now he comes together at exactly 167B. Gina? A couple lines above it. Want to read it? Recall. It is not that a man makes someone who previously thought what is false think what is true. Go ahead. Now, neither. This is 167B. Right on. And yet, in fact. Oh, it's the wrong. Oh, okay. And yet, in fact, no one ever made anyone think truly who previously thought falsely, since it is impossible to think that which is not or to think any other things that those which one feels. <laughs> and these are always true. Okay, that's the key. Obviously the word feels isn't mm -hmm. there. But one experiment, okay, putting it this way. For it is not possible either to think the thing that is not, or to think anything but, one ex but what one experiences. And all experiences are true because they appear to you. Know, right, whatever you experience, that's obviously true for you. <laughs> Can't it's deny your experience. But he doesn't want to say true or false. Well, well he sneaks it in because he's not as pure in the language. But we can correct that every once in a while. What's he trying to do? All right, good enough. Now, of course, ignorant people think of it as truer. But actually, we know. And therefore, we think it's better not truer. And if he slept a little earlier, we will ignore him. Yeah, right. Basis. We'll have to ignore a few things. And as for the wise, my dear Socrates, so far from calling them frogs and tadpoles and such, I call them, when they have to do with the body, physicians, and they have to do with plants, husbandmen. For I assert that husbandmen, too, when plants are sickly and have 
depraved sensations substitute for these sensations that are sound and healthy. And moreover, that wise and honest public speakers substitute in the community sound for unsound views. Look here, the politician, because of his experience, right, here he is. Right. He's skillful enough to challenge and to cause these men to change their opinions. That's quite a different in this Doesn't it? Yeah. Right. Doesn't different. make him wiser. Right. No, it's not a question of wisdom. Right. These substitutes, that's the same thing as we said before, right? Bring about a change in the, in the, okay. in the person who's experiencing whatever they experience. It's always focusing on change. Then. That's right. Change. Mm -hmm. yeah. It isn't that he knows what's true, right. because, notice, for I hold that whatever practices seem right and laudable to any particular state are so for the state so long as it holds them. Only when the practices are, in any particular case, unsound for them, the wise man substitutes others that are in a pure sound. Right. All he's going to be doing is bringing about change in opinions. <clears throat> and since he does so, he will help people. I do help people change their opinion so that they think the direction the state is going to is proper, and then so long as the state thinks it's proper and laudable to do so, they will think that way, won't they? And therefore, in that respect, he has brought about a significant change in behavior. And they'll feel good about it, so therefore... What if they base the, the sound and unsound opinion? Yeah, that's something different than... The, the state. state. The state mm -hmm. decides whether it's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me read it here. I, for I hold that whatever practices seem right and laudable to any particular state are so for the, that state, so long as it holds to them. All right, that's right. As long as the state regards that. See, he, he will therefore, he's really, we might put it in modern sense, he's a PR man for the state. <laughs> I thought he was changing the state to... You thought he was changing the state? Yeah, but he the one that was going to change the, the worse opinion to a better opinion? Well, the state is the people. Yeah. Yeah. But there's also the, the state as a government. If the government decides that there's a certain direction it wants to take, and people have a certain point of view, I see. So you he can say that he's representing the state yeah. and changing the oh. okay. Yeah. Okay, we're all together? This yeah. is kind of interesting I'm that sure. he's gonna cause the <laughs> the beautiful right the cap the decaos, the just and, and noble mm -hmm. to uh, th those are the ones that are as they are for the state as they uh, think believe them to be. But he's gonna change the like uh, crippling ones. Poneros, crippled, disabled, mm -hmm. to the um, Christos, useful or profitable. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's another, that theme of money making for the South. Yeah. Yeah. Justifies. Justifies why we have to pay a great deal of money to the services of the PR man. Good. 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 And now let's uh, get the concluding 167D. Okay, Jim. <coughs> and on the same principle, or yeah, okay. Okay. And on the same principle, the teacher who is able to train his pupils in this manner is not only wise, but is also entitled to receive high pay from them when their education is finished. And in this sense, it is true that some men are wiser than others, and that no one thinks falsely and that you, whether you will or not, must endure to be a measure. Upon these positions, my doctrine stands firm. And if you can dispute it in principle, dispute it by bringing an opposing doctrine against it. Or if you prefer the method of questions, ask questions. For an intelligent person ought not to reject this method. On the contrary, he should choose it before all others. However, let me make a suggestion. 
Do not be unfair in your questioning. It is very inconsistent for a man who asserts that he cares for virtue to be constantly unfair in discussion. And it is unfair in discussion when a man makes no distinction between merely trying to make points and carrying on a real <coughs> argument. In the former, he may jest and try to trip up his opponent as much as he can. But in real argument, he must be in earnest and must set his interlocutor on his feet, pointing out to him those slips only which are due to himself and his previous association. For if you act in this way, those who debate with you will cast the blame for their confusion and perplexity upon themselves, not upon you. They will run after you and love you, and they will hate themselves and run away from themselves taking refuge in philosophy, that they may escape from their former selves by becoming different. But if you act in the opposite way, as most teachers do, you will produce the opposite result. And instead of making your young associates philosophers, you will make them hate philosophy. And when they grow older, when they grow older, if therefore you will accept the suggestion which I made before, you will avoid a hostile and combative attitude and a gracious spirit will enter with me and inquire what we really mean when we declare that all things are in motion and that whatever seems is to each individual, whether man or state. And on the basis of that, you will consider the question whether knowledge and perception are the same or different, instead of doing as you did a while ago, using as your base the ordinary meaning of names and words which most people pervert in haphazard ways, and thereby cause all sorts of perplexities in one another. <coughs> okay, look. Is Protagoras, through Socrates, is he outlining what he considers to be a just way to proceed from this point on? Yes. That's right. Is that sophistical? Is it sophistical? So. It is? Okay, let's, let's pull out each point that you consider sophistical, mm -hmm. or merely rhetorical. Well, what would you start with? In the first place, he's contrasting it with another way of proceeding. You know, in the simplest, don't, don't merely try to make points, carry on a real argument. You know. well, I was thinking See, that I can't tell whether you're making a point or you're just talking to yourself. Which <laughs> really? No, I can't, really. <laughs> but Rhonda is closer than I am, and therefore she could judge me. How it help? How, how it didn't help being no. closer? No. How embarrassing. Wait a minute, I'll get Paul, who's <laughs> wearing glasses. I, I've spoken to Steve about this book. Yeah. Oh. Uh, so you can interpret that? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, that was not the result of the conversation. But I, I have pointed it out to him. Okay. I what's the like way? What's the like way? What, what is the way? Let's assume this is Pythagoras. What's the way Pythagoras wants to proceed in principle with this discussion? I don't know. Is it? Jane, first, she's found a couple of sophisticated. Well, I was thinking of the, of the, of what was the purpose of the, uh, of the discussion. It was to have those uh, run after you and love you, and they will hate themselves. Uh, that, like, that seems to be the object of the argument, as I saw. Yeah, now you have to point out why this is sophisticated. I don't know whether this is good advice or not. How you would say it's sophisticated. Right. I Sophist. Uh, rhetoric. Yeah. Look, read it again, and just as you get to each sentence, point out the fault, and we'll just go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. Now. Um, for if you act in this way, those who debate with you will cast the blame for their confusion and No, no. Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Okay. Up. The beginning of this. Yeah. Oh, the, upon, the upon these positions, my doctrine stands firm. Oh, okay. Upon these positions, my doctrine stands firm. 
And if you can dispute in principle, dispute it by bringing an opposing doctrine against it. One. Or if you prefer the method of questions, ask questions. For an intelligent person ought not to reject this method. On the contrary, he should choose it before all others. That's enough. How about that? Sophistical or what? Doesn't sound like it yet. Doesn't sound no. like it is not. <coughs> well, it certainly wasn't Pythagoras' way. He I loved the long-winded <coughs> speech so that you forgot what he said at the beginning. And he could stretch it out and move it slowly from one side to the other with generalizations, not allowing questions for clarification. Certainly questions and answers are not allowed for for uh, sophistical types of speeches. Mm -hmm. But then that wouldn't be sophistical. Go ahead, respond. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I think you took the position that there's some sophistry in there. Oh, yes. All right, and so far the position that the question and answering method certainly is not a sophistical approach. I would agree. Mm -hmm. okay. How about the form and uh, bring you bring opposing the doctrine against it? I don't see that statistically. I, I think I would say. So far I don't see it statistically. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'll try the next one. Keep going. However, let me make a suggestion. Do not be unfair in your questioning. How about that one? It doesn't seem to be sophisticated. Mm, keep going. It is very <coughs> inconsistent for a man who asserts that he cares for virtue to be constantly unfair in discussion. Good. Mm -hmm. And it is unfair. You disagree with that? No. Sophisticated? No. Oh. And it is unfair in discussion when a man makes no distinction between merely trying to make points and carrying on a real argument. I agree. Mm. In the former, he may jest and try to trip up his opponent as much as he can. But in real argument, he must be in earnest and must set his interlocutor on his feet, pointing out to him those slips, only which are due to himself and his previous association. I don't understand that one. Too. I do. Doesn't that seem like what do. Socks was doing with the Athena? Yeah. 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 Is that what he was doing? I can understand pointing out the associate. What does it mean, stand him on his feet? Well, like, out well out. when he falls down, plunk. Mm -hmm. He's, you know, Pick when he's down. Yeah. Like I got, the, I got the picking him up, you know, and having him there so he will associate with you. If you, if you won't converse, then nothing's going to happen, right? So you pick him up and you set him in front of you. You, you get him into the discussion. You talk about previous associations, maybe teachers, parents, whatever, that may have been an error, which you got. But what about his own? I'm going to point out, we'll try this translation for a moment. Mm -hmm. Try this one I'm as you're reading here as well. Yeah. A debate need not be taken seriously, and one may trip up an opponent to the best of one's power. But a conversation should be taken in earnest. One should help out the other party and bring home to him only those slips and fallacies that are due to himself or to his earlier instructors. Mm -hmm. In contrast, so his own uh, uh, lack of understanding, right, as well as where he learned it. In contrast, just trying now that's yeah. certainly sophistry. No, oh, okay, try the next one. For if you act in this way, those who debate with you can, will cast the blame for their confusion and perplexity upon themselves, not upon you. Is that right? Does that follow? Sure, it's not a personal attack. Right? Yeah, if you don't try to trip them out, then you just help them out as much as possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. right. well, what do you judge that? They will. Well, I was reading it as if um, that, that the words may be inappropriate because I, I, I listening to the word blame and also later on they will run after you and love you and then hate themselves that doesn't well, seem to be a, an appropriate effect of a good argument why not try it again if you follow this rule read it if you follow this rule, then for if you act in this way, those who debate with you will cast the blame for their confusion 
and perplexity upon themselves. Would that not follow? And not upon you? Would that follow if we just follow that rule that was just stated? Mm -hmm. Sure will. Yeah, it seems like it would. Well then, so far you're in agreement, right? That in fact it would follow, yeah, but I don't consider that, I, I don't read that effect to be the best. Well, we don't have the effect yet. Okay. For if you act in this way, those who debate with you will cast the blame for their confusion and perplexity upon themselves, not upon you. Right. Next. They will run after you and love you, and they will hate themselves and run away from themselves, taking refuge in philosophy, that they may escape from their former selves by becoming different. Mm. If you follow this rule, your associates will lay the blame for their confusions and perplexities on themselves and not on you. They will like you and court your society. And disgusted with themselves will turn to philosophy, hoping to escape from their former selves and become different men. Well, that's certainly different than this. Too. Well, what word do you find objectionable? Well, it's the last part. What part? Well, I... And look, I don't understand. Let's see. They'll run away from themselves, taking refuge in philosophy that they may escape from their former selves by becoming different. Mm -hmm. yeah. It it almost seemed like you know, philosophy was a refuge for those running away from themselves. Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> former self. Their former self. What was their former self? What was their former self? Well, they say run away from themselves and actually their former selves. Well, if their former selves is going to be worse, then I can see that maybe that would be better. Well, could it have anything to do with your associ associates? And, uh, well, not, is that your coffee? No. <laughs> not. Not your phone? No. It's not to take the coffee. It's not the phone. Not the phone. Dave's beeper. Beeper, beeper. Is that your tape recorder? Yeah. Why don't you change it? Well, because I was interested in this. Oh, you're interested in that. <laughs> 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 Next. It's like a frog that was running inside of a computer or something. <coughs> running away from the self, if, if the self is improved, that would be a good thing. Well, you, you read it, your, your sentence, please, and see how that goes. For if you act in this way, those who debate you will cast the blame for their confusion and perplexity upon themselves, not upon you. They will run after you and love you, and they will hate themselves and run away from themselves. Yeah, what kinds of people are those? those who hate themselves. Because of what? Because it looks like of their confusion and perplexities upon yeah. themselves. Yeah. That was their former yeah. state. Right? Yeah. And then someone is pointing out to them their perplexities and their confusion. That's attributed to themselves and separate from those that were attributed to their teachers and instructors. Right. It's part of equal change and it's very persuasive. It's a <laughs> Isn't that what he's doing? what Piachita said early on about his pregnancy or his, his, what he was going through, I don't recall him blaming himself because he couldn't find out the answer, but he, re he revealed his perplexities and his confusion. That's certainly true. What's that have to do with this section? Well,
question is, if you follow this rule, what rule? Um, the way he describes the real argument. And if you do follow this rule, will that have some effect on those people yeah. that are able to follow this rule? Yeah. What, what will it, there's two possibilities. You gave one. Want to read the next one and see which, which one you think is more likely? But if you act in the opposite way, as most teachers do, you will produce the opposite result. And instead of making your young associates philosophers, you will make them hate philosophy when they grow older. You wouldn't want that. Who's is he giving? Is he giving? Who's standing there? <laughs> alternative. Yeah. In terms want, of this discussion. You want him to like philosophy. Okay. Go ahead. If therefore you will accept the suggestion which I made before, you will avoid a hostile and combative attitude, and in a gracious spirit will enter the lists with me and inquire what we really mean when we declare that all things are in motion, and that whatever seems is to each individual, whether man or state. And on the basis of that, you will consider the question whether knowledge and perception are the same or different. Instead of doing as you did a while ago, using as your basis the ordinary meaning of the names and words, which most people pervert in haphazard ways and thereby cause all sorts of perplexities in one another. Would you agree this section that we just read goes from this point to this point? And the point that we just covered, the rules that Protagoras would like to see used in this discussion, goes from 167 to 168. Would you agree with that? You know what's sophistical about B is that it's a lie. Pythagoras wouldn't say that. I mean, it's not sophistical. That Pythagoras would say the opposite well, the to these line. rules. Look at, look at. You see, if if Protagoras would object to this position. You know what? So try to if Pythagoras wouldn't object in this way, then the former points must be legitimate. Look at if Pythagoras wouldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, shouldn't, any way you want it, that's right. object in this way, that's right. that's right. which is B. Then everything that took place in A, that, that everything that preceded that is, is uh, then all that preceded one sixty six A is sound. Wait a minute. But watch now. But would you not agree? That at 162D, 163D, 164C, 165D, the argument that Socrates uses is in fact criticized in the section, is it not? That's right. That's right. Well, then do you find something curious going on? Wait a minute. 
is Socrates being criticized by Protagoras. Oh, you, as uh, nominally? Yes. Is Socrates being criticized by Protagoras? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. In, come on. In A and B? That's no, no B. Right? Clearly in B. Right. Right? Because he's using rhetoric of that. Socrates is. Socrates is being criticized <coughs> by Protagoras. Is Protagoras is Protagoras's position being ridiculed by Socrates? Witness this stuff. Uh, you know all this sure. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Right. These are unfairly. Yeah. Uh, tadpoles and such. Right. Unfairly. Yeah. Wait a minute. Now, here's the hard part. Let's try this now. Okay. If Protagoras, therefore, objects Right? If, Socrates, if Protagoras objects to the style that Socrates is using, then what is the principle he's going to be using to seek the uh, truth of this position? What's his method? Question and answer, Socrates. By question and question, answer, question and answer. By dialogue. Or, or Wait, does that fit no. all of this? <laughs> To overcome the objections that Socrates is making to Protagoras' own position, because Socrates is really making fun of it, isn't he? Yeah. Unfairly and all that. Okay. To overcome it, must he not become rational enough to insist upon a rational method? But does yeah. the rational method itself fit within Protagoras' position? No, it torpedoes ah. himself. Right. It's just to stay, stay the on the other side. He just shot himself down. Looking at what he's doing. But the way in which it doesn't. It looks I, I, I don't have your point. Okay. Um, if you can dispute this doctrine and principle, do so by argument, staying the case on the other side, or by asking questions. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain way in which you want them to do that. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, does he have, which one of those two possibilities does he outline? He says, ask them questions. Right. It has to be done fairly, and That's fairly right. is so. Uh, because the first alternative is sophisticable. Yeah. That's logic, right? One, one argument against argument. another. No, rather that <coughs> the truth, the truth of position A can't be asserted. Pardon me. The position of A, the truth of falsehood of position A, can't be argued by proving B. Yeah. That's what. It's by stating the case. A, no, a is not side. false because B is true. You have to show that A is inadequate in itself. Mm -hmm. You mean bringing one That's argument true. against another? Yeah, it goes nowhere. Because yeah. you're just out throwing You're stones. just showing differences. Yeah. No, just showing differences. Differences don't matter. That's, that's the only option he gives. He doesn't say show the weakness in this right. argument. Right. So he drops that first possibility mm -hmm. and then proceeds with questions. My point to you is, hey, look here, once he admits to it, accepting the role of questions, does that go beyond his own position? Oh, I, the tiger's sure. Yeah. See, we would, but I don't see well, he falls into the trap. He falls into a trap of truth <laughs> that way. Well, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Hmm? Certainly. I don't see it. You don't see what? Tell me what you don't see. Well, I don't see how if the case on the way Socrates argues that that what if that refutes his position. That's not a very good point. If he takes on who's he? A Protagoras. Okay. If he agrees to the question and the answer method, mm -hmm. then how does that in, in fact refute his position? How does it fit in the position? That or, or well, it, it whether it re rather it or doesn't fit his position. Well, what is the way he has established this? Did he establish this position on the basis of questioning? Or appealing to your experience? Appealing to your experience. Well, then he never built this through a questioning approach, did he? Did he? No. 
Did I when I built it? Yeah. It's like, come on. Don't you want to experience things in here? Well, you're saying you're saying that your questions are more rhetorical. No, no. I'm okay. saying that we haven't questioned the position. All we've done is outlined it. We haven't yeah. questioned okay. it. We haven't questioned it yet. We haven't brought another What's argument the, against it, or oh, right. we haven't asked it questions. Let me put it another way. What's the test of whether this is a sound position or not? Turning back on to asking questions. Is that consistent with the system? Mm -hmm. No, he doesn't yeah. want to do this. It's a head. Yeah. Okay. That's where we're going next time. Yeah. So what Socrates did was use the sophistical method, or the, the method of rhetoric. Then he... Then he was able to let Protagoras criticize him. And upon doing that, criticized him in such a way that he had to go back to his method, which which was checkmate. That's right. So he he argued against him on the only yeah. real basis that, that Protagoras could accept. Mm -hmm. I mean, all of these arguments here, make fun of them or not, That's right. they're telling arguments. on a, If he's a rhetorician, they're rhetorical points. Sure. So now, in order to defend his position, he has to say, look, you can't be rhetorical with my philosophical That's right. position. You have to be rational. You have to follow the dialectic. Socrates goes, Let's right. <laughs> right, so he pulled them in, right. made Just fun of his position, rhetorically using the skills of the rhetorician. Right. It looks so terrible that everyone's upset with it. He's even upset with it himself. Yeah. And he so criticizes then he took, himself for it. Then he criticizes himself for it. Oh, that's sure. <coughs> yeah. Is that a nice oh. see, turning around? Turning around saying, wow. yeah, that's, right. that's what confused me when I read it. I remember I told that night, you know, I made that yeah, statement about right. what Socrates said. And you that's said, right. no, that's what Protagoras said. And I said, hmm. So I went back and read it. And I said, what's confusing me is that Protagoras, is, he's saying it, but it's not his position. That's right. Yeah, that's right. But Socrates is saying that's what he would say. Yeah. 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 But he tried. But it's not his position because he couldn't have. <laughs> yeah. He just. Well, I mean, that was checking. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Protagoras wouldn't object in this way. If if Protagoras wouldn't object in this way, <laughs> then all that preceded is sound. You didn't have to accept it. Okay, I don't see how that falls. If Pythagoras didn't object to the discussion that went on, then the discussion was over because the gave up, didn't it? Oh, I see. Okay. Right? See, this is round two. Pythagoras said all you guys did before wasn't fair. Okay. He, he, but he actually, he just counts, he just counts when he says A hey, because he says, hey, don't, lay, don't lay too much stress on, 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 yeah. on, on the word, you know, well, but they get it clearer. Yeah. yeah, don't trip me up on mere words. Yeah, right. yeah. Go to the meanings. Oh, yeah, you're going to be good. Then those arguments would have shot him down. Yeah. Those at 162, 63, 63. These are These are all fun ones, aren't they? Yeah. You know the ones. Like, remember the one about if someone turns off the lights, what will we all be if knowledge is perception? <laughs> <laughs> Empty. Pretty, right? Only light one candle, we'll all be dimwits. <laughs> <laughs> right? That's fine. Yeah. Right, as someone walks away from you, what happens to them? They become smaller and smaller until they disappear. If knowledge is perception, that's the way it appears. That's when they're not here, they're not here. Right, when they're not here, when we don't see them, they're invisible, they're gone, and they don't come back until they come close <laughs> to us. And therefore, everybody is recreated as they come close to you and disappears, and is no longer existent as they walk away from you. <laughs> you can make the whole world disappear if you only do what? Close, Close your, eyes. your eyes. Close your eyes, or move far, far and far away from the Earth so that you cannot see it. If you cannot see it, then it doesn't exist. This is what happens to astronauts. They go too far out, then it doesn't exist. Right, this is all fun jokes. Try right? this, what he's doing. He makes fun of it, doesn't he? They're battles. Yeah. Right. right, then the sun goes down in the ocean. Coral it's way to remember. Yeah, all right. Yeah, it burns up. Yeah. Burns now, railroad tracks come <laughs> together. His original, <laughs> but his original per object in, in that point in time is he wants to get Theodorus in to an argument. He did, didn't he? Yeah, mm -hmm. he did. Theodorus is a good He set him up. Wait a No. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Too early. We have to continue. Is it really? We started late. So. We
We started early. Well, no, you started on time. Why do we have to go exactly two hours? <laughs> All right, that's it. That's it. I'll say it. Yeah, this is a good place to go.